Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the phaser. Time for this. This is a weapon that needs no introduction. A versatile tool with a multitude of functions, one for seemingly any situation. But only two of those functions in particular seem to monopolize all of the screen time. The phaser was on stun. The weapon set on stun. That was the stun setting. This is not. Set to kill. Such uncompromising choices, especially for alleged explorers. But every once in a while, they surprise us. We need some light. And now, we learn something. Sanguinarium. Heating stuff up to cause either light or a plot complication has been a staple of science fiction for decades. Let her go. And the place to start looking as to how this works is obvious. Now here's what they've always told you. An atom consists of three pieces, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. The proton and neutron are glued together into a single mass called the nucleus in the center of the atom, while the electrons swirl around it in a cloud, in physics terms, which is called a shell. Now here's what they didn't tell you. This electron shell is not constant. It changes. It can move upward into higher levels. This is the very definition of heat. When an electron shell is down here, it's cold and sluggish. When it's up there, it's hot and excited. And that's what this is called, an excited electron state. What can cause this heat? Well, a phaser will work nicely. But sooner or later, everything cools down. And when an atom cools down from a high electron state to a low one, something happens. It emits light. It emits light. When an electron drops from a high level to a low level, it emits light. And don't tell me you've never seen that before. Allow me to introduce you to neon. In this case, electricity goes in, pushing the atom up, and then light is released. No different from a fluorescent light bulb. This phenomenon surrounds us every day. You just never knew that you knew it. In the year in which we live, humans have discovered that energy and matter are interchangeable. And that's not even the half of it. This gets really involved really quick. The official term for this branch of science is called emission spectra, and modern astronomy might be almost totally helpless without it. Every element on the periodic table has its own unique color, its own unique light, a fingerprint, as it were. So astronomers can look at nebula a billion miles away and tell you exactly what they are made out of. This nebula is green, therefore it's full of sodium. This one is red, therefore it's full of helium, and etc. and so on. And as long as we're on this subject, has anyone ever bothered to ask exactly what is a laser? A type of laser beam is slicing into the saucer section. Laser is another frequently mentioned sci-fi weapon. Forward lasers, lock on. Now whereas to the average fan, it's just another big word they hear on TV, it actually does stand for something. Laser actually stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. And we are talking about emission spectra, aren't we? You take an atom and you stimulate it. Pushing the atoms way up into high orbits so they'll release rings of light. Now if you multiply this by 50 million atoms and focus it, what you've got is a scorching weapon. Fire! Then, isn't that what phases are for? Making rocks glow is interesting and all that, but it's hardly the fun part. 
Captain, I see something! Let's not forget where we started. They have two settings, stun and kill. It would be best not to confuse them. And what would happen if we did? How do phasers kill? Have they ever told us? Do we know? Well, no. Not yet. So we get to figure it out by ourselves. Disintegration. Watch science fiction long enough and you realize that there are as many explanations for this event as there are weapons that inflict it. It neutralizes Mason somehow. They're the atomic flow holding matter together. Cut across their lines of magnetic force and any object will simply cease to exist. But we don't need to go to nearly all that trouble. And if everyone gets their own explanation, then here is mine. It has to do with the states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Out of the four, humans usually prefer to stay solid. But the only thing that keeps you solid is your temperature. If you're cold, you're a solid. If you're kind of warm, you're a liquid. And if you're liquidy, scorchy, hot, you're plasma. But we already said that hot is defined by the electron shells. Lower shells are cold and higher shells are hot. Well, how about scorching hot? If a little bit of energy makes an atom glow, then a lot of energy will push the atom past melting, past boiling, as its neutrons and electrons all metamorphosize into liquid hot plasma. And after this unfortunate event happens to your electrons, what do you suppose happens to the rest of you? simply vaporize them. Like this? As you know, Commander Chekhov, no one can fire an unauthorized phaser aboard a starship. So, as with any other tool, a phaser's use depends on how you use it. It can create light, or it can kill. And if it is both in the same episode, it's particularly worthy of note. Enjoy it if you must. Just make absolutely certain that you do indeed press the correct button.